Okay, so you've created a awesome um, box project, and it meets all the requirements, such as uh, being 2.5 and 2.5 in width and uh, length, and then three inches in depth. You have a clamping boss that is uh, offset the correct amount, and so I'll actually put that dimension in right now, uh, 0.05, and you have the correct size of clamp, clamping boss of half an inch. Uh, you have a, the bottom has a small lip of 0.1 by 0.1, the wall thickness is 0.2, the, the floor thickness is at least 0.3, the ceiling thickness is uh, at least 0.3 or um, the the lip within that lid is at least 0.15 up to leave you space for the, um, the portion that mates with it. The uh, difference between the lid, which is the solid line right here, and the, the base is 0 0.05. There's that 0 0.005 offset so that the lid is bigger than the base, okay? And the smallest radius is at least 3 sixteenths of an inch or 0.1875. And so you, here you can see I've got a much larger uh, radius, but you, this inside most smallest radius has to be bigger than 0.1875. So now that you have that, you can actually create a new uh, Kirimoto. So we're going to use the Kirimoto application. It's available in the App Store. And it is free and uh, all you have to do is uh, bring it in and, and activate it, but it should be free. If there's another version of it that costs money, don't use that. Use the free version. So I'm going to click on Kirimoto right here. And it's going to ask me, it, it guesses what box I want to have, and so I'm just going to double check that it's got that correct part right there. Oh no, it came in with three of them. So I'm actually going to delete a couple and make sure I just have the one. There we go. And I'm going to clear out this base right here, uh, this, this lid, and we're going to um, actually use a, a roughing operation. And, but before I do that, I want to make sure that I create my setup and that I've got the right machine. And so I'm going to click here. I'm using a CNC right here. Uh, you can use the uh, basically any generic, any of these. It doesn't matter which one. But basically you hit the plus sign and that opens up and makes a new, um, uh, pot, or new machine. And I changed mine to the ProLite 1000. That's the machine we use. The width is 10.5. That's 10 and a half inches uh, in width along our X axis. Our depth is five inches. That's along our Y axis. And then the maximum spindle is 5,000 RPMs. Uh, all of this we can remain and keep the same. NC is the, the file extension we want. Within our G-code, uh, the tool change can stay the same, the dwell can stay the same, the spindle speed can change, the, say, stay the same. The header, uh, I ask that you put in your uh, a semicolon and then your name. What that does is it uh, makes sure that your name is on the top of every file. It makes it easier for whoever's running the machine, probably me, to know exactly who owns and uh, is in charge of creating this particular file. For this particular type of uh, cam, we're going to actually use keep it set units to millimeters, and that's because as it exports, even though we're working in inches, uh, this was actually created by a European country uh, company, and because of that, they use millimeters, so we have to keep it that way. They also decided to use absolute position as well, so we'll have to use that for our um, our header. And then the footer, we can remain the same, which is M30, and all that does is end the program. Uh, 
Um, feel free to hit save and then uh, X out of that box right there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the tool is correct. And so I'm clicking on that setup again. And I've already created this 3 8 inch end mill. Um, but what you can do is hit the plus sign and it will um, allow you to change the name, uh, change the, the tool type. And so we've got three options. We've got the ball, which has a rounded bottom. And then we've also got a taper at the bottom. But we're going to use this end mill. That's the type of tool we're going to use. Uh, we can keep the tool number to four, not a big deal. The shaft is actually what's held in by the machine, and so the diameter for our tool is 0.375, and the length of that is one and a half inches. The flute, that's actually the cutting portion of it, and so that diameter can be 0.375, and then the length of it is actually three inches as well. And then there isn't a taper, so we're just going to leave that at zero. Once you're all done with that, creating that, make sure you hit save and done. So we've got our machine, we've got our tools, uh, preferences. There's a lot of options, but we don't need to worry about those right now. Um, over here on the left, we can change our view. Um, so we can go top, home, we can clear any changes. Uh, scan is, uh, yours might also say uh, slice. But basically, we're going to use the newest version. So if you look in the upper right-hand corner, underneath your name, there's a little person with a gear next to them. And we're going to find version 2.5. And we're just going to make sure to have the updated version. I already got that document in there, so it's all good. Then the next thing we're going to do is, and we can preview and animate from here. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, we're going to use a roughing operation. And uh, we want to make sure that we have our 3 8 inch end mill. That's the right tool. Our spindle speed is 3,000. I will tell you this. Um, our spindle speed and our um, feed rate are going to depend on the material. And I always test out to make sure we have the right combination of um, working through the machine quickly um, so that the, there's less heat buildup but also having it be small enough uh, or slow enough that it uh, doesn't break the bit, okay? The step over is the amount that it steps over, so it's, the overlap's gonna be 0.3 um, of that tool. And then we've got our step down, um, so that's 0.1875, that's half of our, um, that's half of our, um, fee, our, our tool diameter. And as you can see, it, uh, for whatever reason, kind of changes that just a little bit. Uh, we can just leave it if it keeps changing. The feed rate is 30. The plunge rate is 15. Uh, again, I'm going to give you the feed rate. The plunge rate is always half. Uh, where it says leave stock, we want that to be zero because we don't want there to be extra stock when we're all done. Yes, it's a roughing operation. Normally, you'd have a roughing operation and then a, a finishing operation. But for us, we're just going to um, do one operation for both of it. It works for us. And then uh, we want to clear the voids. We want to clear the faces. We do not want to clear the top. All that does is it faces it. We don't need to do that. And we don't want it to be just the inside. We also want it to be the outside as well. And then we want to make sure that enable is selected there. Okay. Then we can take a look. Uh, outline, contour, trace, tabs, and drill. We're not doing any of those. And so we can tell that they're not actually uh, selected because there isn't a little dot. Just like on rough, there is a dot because we want it. Everything else does not have it. Uh, in the next little section right here, we're going to go to stock. And basically, uh, you've already created the correct size and everything of the stock by having the right clamping boss, having the right top and bottom. And so uh, we basically want to have zero for our offsets. So we'll have offset selected. We'll have zeros for the width, depth, and height. And then we just want to make sure that that's enabled. The next thing we're going to look at is 
we want to make sure that our um, operation doesn't go too far down. If the operation keeps going, it's going to run into the clamp, it's going to run into the, um, you know, and, and make it so we have to, uh, you know, emergency stop, and that's not what we want. So we're going to go to limits, and for our Z bottom, we're going to change that to 3 inches minus the, uh, the distance from the top to the bottom of our operation. I remember, and I, I double-checked my the, the CAD, and so I know that from the top of the stock to the, my clamping boss is half of an inch, and so I took three inches minus half of an inch, and that got me my 2.5. Everything else can stay the same. We'll leave that. And so uh, from there, we should actually be good. So we've got our rough operations, our stock, and our limits. So let's scan and see what happens. So now we've got the actual tool paths going on on this shape. I'm going to render this as solid to see. Okay, so it goes around the outside. That's good. And it cuts on along on the inside. Okay, uh, I always like to preview it and see, and so uh, I've got my preview right here, um, and and the best part is actually to animate, and it goes pretty slow, so I'm going to bump up the speed all the way to 8, and as you can see, it's still relatively slow on this, and uh, there we go. We can see the, the full operation that this is actually going to do. And as long as it is just milling what I want to be milled and not too much extra or not anything extra, we're all good. And so there you go. That is how to uh, get your camming ready uh, using that roughing operation in Onshape.